few more from there. See what's up. And then if you... Hey everyone, it's XO Man. Look at that. A little damage there to this door. Have you ever had anything like that? It's, it, it can be frustrating, but let me tell you, it's a very easy fix. Um, and you can really, you can get it looking pretty much unnoticeable and it doesn't take a lot of time. I've been using for more than 30 years in, in, in homes, rental properties, uh, I've been using the same thing. It's uh, water putty. In fact, I think I learned how to use this stuff when I was a houseman in a hotel in New Orleans in the early 80s. Uh, but it's just water putty and it dries pretty quickly and it layers nicely. You can put several layers and if you know what you're doing, you can texture it and you can make it look like nothing ever happened. So we've done just a little damage here to give you an idea how to use this compound. It's uh, basically a powder you mix with water and stay tuned and let me show you how I do this. All right, so before you begin with your, uh, with your putty, you want to get some nice rough sandpaper and just rough up the door a little bit. Uh, rough, rough up the area where, the, where you're going to feather out the putty. And it will hold nicely because when we push it in, we're going to be pushing it into the cracks and it'll sort of lock it in place, the whole patch. And let me tell you, it, it will dry hard as a rock, so it'll probably, probably be stronger than the, uh, definitely be stronger than the original material, which again is just basically a, a hardened pressed paper. Okay, so you can tell from the looks of it that I've had this can for a good long time. Look, the top is all rusted. You buy a big can of this, you, you may have it for years. Look at that, since 1965. So this is this is just a good old-fashioned fix. So I'm going to take a little of this powder. You see that? It's just a little powder mix. And I'm going to slowly mix in some water. I want to get it, I don't want to get it too thin because I want some good hold uh, with this first layer. And it's so super easy to mix. Obviously, I've already I've put too much water in, so what I'll do is I'll just carefully grab a little more powder. Now, you want to remember to clean these tools if these are tools that are, that are not going in the trash uh, in relatively short order. You want to use this stuff quickly because, like I say, it, it sets up and dries hard as a rock, and it doesn't take much time, as you will see. I'll have more, I'll have more than I need for the first go around here. You might not want to stick this spoon back in here unless you get it all the loose stuff off of here. Okay, now I've got a nice thick paste. So we're going to begin our build up here. force the material into the cracks so that it will anchor in there nicely. And you don't you don't need to do a whole lot with this first layer. You don't want to get too thick because you want it to dry. And then uh, you can come add your next layer. Rome wasn't rebuilt in a day, my friends. See, I'm just pushing that into the hollow of this area. I'm not going to try to build it up right away. You don't want to use this excessively because it's going to, if, when it hardens down, you don't want to have to fight to sand off a bunch of, uh, a bunch of buildup. And we'll call that our first layer. Now again, it's important to remember that if, if you do try to build it up too quickly, what you'll have, especially if your material, your putty is wet you'll have sagging and you don't want it to sag out of your 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 damaged area so I'm just gonna make sure that I don't have once again I'm gonna go over it and make sure I don't have any little 
fat edges that are sticking out too high and I can kind of taper all this off and once once I'm done with this first layer I want to go ahead and clean up my bowl and my spoon and my tools because I don't want that putty hardening on my tools and we'll start again in just a few minutes okay now as it as it begins to set you can come in here I've got pretty rough hands and I can again just make sure to take down those edges because I I don't want to build up I don't want a hump here on my door and as I add layers I run I run a risk of that of doing that more and more I may have several layers on here in the end so I just want to take down those edges and just make sure that everything is in there another way you can do that is run a, a level tool over the top of it like so to ensure that you've got nothing rising up okay and it's easy to work with when it's in a semi-set state uh, it's kind of like Bondo you can sort of carve it and uh, manipulate it but there we go I've got nothing above grade there so I'm good to go here's another thing you can do after it sets up and before it hardens completely to keep the level the way you like it just sand it you'll find that the, the material is much easier to sand down when it's set up but not totally hardened that's why you can get uh, excess out of any grooves and off the, the fade edge and typically it takes about one hour for this to dry up nicely between layers and if you want to move things along you can do so with a hairdryer uh, you just don't want to overdo it don't sit it on there directly and overheat the material but uh, what you're doing basically is that the, the, the putty sets by drying the water evaporates out of it and of course a hairdryer is going to speed that up so Okay, so look at that. That's been an hour. It's hard as a rock. That is just really, really hard. So we're going to go ahead and move on the next layer here. And just remember to get your putty really nice and you get a nice thick paste. And you want to you want to use your putty within uh, 15 minutes. Don't want to make too much of it. Use it within 15 minutes, and that should be no problem unless you have a really monstrous job. You should be good. Okay. Now you notice that I have a grain to my door and I've got putty in the grain. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that those grains, those grooves are not filled with putty. And I'm going to continue them down into the new, the putty work. And we can, we'll straighten all that out when we uh, have our final layer, then I'll be able to, to sort of uh, do the grooving on the putty as it's setting up so that everything is consistent. You don't have groove, smooth groove. You don't want to end up with that. So I'm just kind of keeping things in line here. I don't know if you can see. I'm just following the grooves and cleaning them out just like you would get your teeth cleaned. Let's get into... Uh, third layer. This is not even completely dry yet, but I'm ready to go with my third layer. I don't, 
don't think that I'm going to settle for just the three layers. I'm going to do a finish layer, I'm pretty sure, but we'll see. We'll see how this layer goes. And I've got to bring up this edge right here. So that could be tricky. Just got to do a little contouring there. Okay. Well, I, keep, I keep producing different tools here, don't I? Now, see, I noticed some indentation here. I didn't even realize I had done that. I tried to make a nice small hole so that my whole door wasn't damaged, but that's good. That's good for practice. Just kind of cutting it down to grade. Well, that was definitely my last fill layer, and the final layer will just be a finish layer. Okay, moving a little closer here. This is going to be uh, a little more wet, this layer. Uh, it's kind of like a skim coat you would do in drywall or drywall repair. And that will help me just fill everything out, all the little holes. Again, I'm working that edge right in there, just trying to keep it lined up with the rest of the edge. That was kind of smashed in a little bit. I'm going to get that in there again. Now at different stages of, of hardness, you want to try to find your grooves and run them down through your, through your water putty there, see like so. And maybe a few up.
get a, a new teal. Now, that should be very hard to notice if it's noticed at all. <laughs>